Would you like to follow up with a survey after you've sold the product on JotForm or maybe after a donation or just filled out a form? Well, that is possible and we're gonna show you how on this video. So follow me to my desktop right now. Welcome to Job Forum. My name is George, and today I'm going to show you how to send out a follow up survey after X amount of days. That way, we can follow up with our clients to see what they think about our product or the process of the donation. Or if you're just using the form for another purpose, we want to know what they thought about that process. So, in this case, we are going to trigger it using an automation system called the Zapier. This automation system will integrate between JotForm and SendinBlue, which is what we're going to use as our email marketing service. So in this case, after X amount of days, we are going to send out another form that has the survey and we're going to use send in blue for that process and automation. So let's get started by building out the form that's going to be the trigger. In this case, we are going to build a basic form just to show you that you can trigger this automation. It could be a sales form, a donation form, or just any type of form, and it will trigger this automation. It'll be the same steps. Okay. So let's add a few elements to this form. We're going to say, for example, full name, address, and the email. We're going to keep it simple for this. Let's go ahead and rename this. For example, it's going to be sales form. Okay, there we go. The next step that we are going to do is head on over to settings, integrations, and we are going to search for send in blue. Let's go ahead and select it. And like I mentioned before, this is going to use Zapier for the automation. So let's use this app. Be aware that if you are not logged into Zapier, it will log you. It will ask you to log in. In this case, I am already logged in, so I don't have the need to do that. Let me go ahead and name this app and we're going to say send in blue survey automation. Okay, let's keep it like that. There we go. And the first thing that we need is the trigger. What is this going to trigger? In this case, we are going to trigger. We're going to head and edit this, sign into job form. In this case, I'm already signed in. Let's go ahead, continue. We're going to allow the integration. That way, Zapier can read the information from job form. So now it's connected to my job form account. Let's go ahead and continue. Again, we're going to use this form. Now, be aware that if you plan to use another trigger from another form, you'll have to select it here. In this case, we're going to use this one, sales form. Let's go ahead and continue. Test the trigger. There we go. It just received some demo data right here. You can see this is just example data. If you have previous signups from the form, you'll see that triggered from the latest signup. Let's go ahead and continue. Okay, and now it's asking us to integrate with send in blue. Okay, let's go ahead and the action event is add or update a contact. In this case, we want to add a contact. Um, let's just to give you an overview of how this is going to work. When someone fills out that form, it's going to send that data between Zapier and it's going to send it over to send in blue and it's going to create a contact and send in blue. The next automation that we're going to work with is send in blue, where we're going to send out that survey after X amount of days once we receive that contact. OK, so let's go ahead and continue. We're going to connect with send in blue. Here we go. And it's asking us for the API key. Let's go into send in blue and grab that API key. This is my send in blue dashboard and the API key is over here on the top right. You can see SMTP and API. Let's go ahead and select it. There we go. And we're going to generate a new API and we're going to name this, for example, JotForm. The reason you would name this is because if you need to later on edit it or delete it, you know where to find it. Okay. You can see name JotForm. If I don't need it later on, we don't want to leave that API key open. We can remove it. Okay. Let's go back into JotForm. Let's open up automation here, continue. And again, this is giving it the access to send in blue so it can read the information or send out information. In this case, it's going to send the contact information. Let's go ahead and continue. And now it wants us to fill in these gaps with the information from JotForm from the previous trigger. Okay. So 
So in this case, the email, we're gonna find that field right here. Here it is, field email. And we're gonna add it to a specific list. In this case, we don't have a special list for this. I can add it to a general list. Let me really quickly create a new list. Let's go back to send in blue. We'll go into contacts. We're going to create an events. We're going to go into list. There we go. And we're going to add a new list. We're going to call it dot form. Okay. Let's create an empty list. There we go. Now we're going to use this list for our automation. Let's go back into dot form. Go to the list, load more. Here we go. Now we have the new list. Let's go ahead and select it. That's where it's going to add our new contacts from this trigger. Okay. Update type. We're going to add. Okay. We're not going to tie the attributes. If you want to tie the attributes, for example, if you want to say the city is tied to this specific element inside of job form from the previous um, form that we have, that is possible. First name, last name, the, the form ID, et cetera. We can tie those attributes to send them over to send them blue in case you want to do a little bit more customized automation. Okay. So let's go ahead and continue. Test and continue. There we go. It should have been added. Let's go into our contacts. Remember, we're in the job form list. Let's refresh. And here it is, John Doe at example.com. Okay, so that's okay now. Now be aware, let's turn on the zap. If you forget to turn it on, the automation, well, it's off and it won't send the data. So now it's on, we can see the confirmation with the little green button right there. And we're good to go with this automation. Now, what do we have to do next? Let's build our survey form because we're gonna use that in Sending Blue. So let's go back to our main dashboard on John Form. Let's create a new form. We'll use a template for this. And we are going to use a survey form. Let's go ahead and find it here. It's survey templates. And we're going to grab this random template. If you want to check these out, you can go ahead and click on them and preview. And if you like it, use a template just like I did right now. We're going to use this employee satisfaction survey. And we're going to say, um, we're going to say purchase. Purchase Satisfaction Survey, okay? We're just gonna pretend that we've sold the product on the previous form, and we were gonna send the survey as a Purchase Satisfaction Survey, just to see what they thought about the product, or the service, or the process of filling out the form, for any given reason, right? Okay, so here's this form. Pretty long, but it's good, okay? So we are gonna change the title. There it is, Purchase Satisfaction Form. Now, let's go into Publish we are going to need this link right here, okay? Let's go ahead and copy it. And let's go back into Send in Blue. In Send in Blue, now we're gonna start the automation process here. So we're gonna continue actually the automation. So let's go into automation on the top menu. Here we go. We're going to create a workflow. Here we go. And we can select from the ones that they have available here. But in this case, this is custom. We're gonna create our own. So create a custom workflow. We're going to name this job form survey sale. Now follow. Okay. Description, just job form trigger. Okay. Allow your contacts to enter the workflow more than once. Now, if you plan to use this as a survey after a sale on your job form or a donation or for any reason, you might want to send again the survey after every sale that you make. If not, then keep it off. In this case, I would suggest on because every time that we make a sale or a donation or et cetera, we want to get that feedback. Okay. So first thing that it's going to ask us, add an entry point. What is this going to do to get started? So let's go ahead and click on this plus button and we're going to say a contact details. Okay. Select it. And we're going to say a contact is added to a list. There we go. Which list in this case, jot form. Okay. Continue. Now you've probably figured it out by now, but with the automation that we built previously, we said that when someone signs, signs the form, they fills it out, it's submitted, it's going to send that contact data 
to send them blue into a brand new list. And then it's going to trigger this. So you see how we are continuing this automation? Well, we're gonna get started here. So this is the trigger, that's what it's going to do. What has to happen next? In this case, I would recommend that we add a delay. Now remember, we, want, we don't want to send out this right away, especially if you are selling a physical product on JotForm. So if you're selling a t-shirt, well, you gotta wait for that to arrive. I don't know, one day, seven days, 15 days. And then we wanna wait for them to actually test it out. Maybe they didn't like it, maybe they didn't feel the cotton or for any given reason. So we wanna give the right amount of days to give that survey, to send out the survey. So in this case, we're gonna say days and we're gonna give them seven days. This would be a hypothetical use case where we say, hey, you know what? Um, the user received the product next day shipping or three days, so four more days is enough. So seven days is good, okay? We're gonna continue. And now we're gonna go with the next step. In the next step, we are going to send an email, okay? In this case, we have no email created for this. So we are going to create a new email template. Let's click on that. And this should open up our email editor. Let's go ahead and give this email a name. So in this case, we are going to say jot form, jot form trigger, okay? Survey trigger. Okay, the subject line. This is what's going to be actually in the subject for the email. So in this case, it could be live, right? And we'll add a personalization to this if we have that available. For example, if we tie the attributes to the name, we can use that as a variable right there. And it's gonna be unique each time that, some, that this sends out the email. Preview text in case you want to add that so people know what it's about. Um, survey for, I don't know, product sold at X store. Okay, just an example. From the email, the, from the emails that you have tied on Send in Blue, you'll select those. And from name, default from name from the one we have already tied in our Send in Blue. If not, you can add your own. So for example, I can say Jorge from or hit job form, okay, this is an example. And let's go next. It can give us the option for drag and drop editor classic or the new drag and drop editor new. It's up to you what you want to use. If you're used to the classic editor, it's fine. If you wanna go with the next one, we'll go with the new. Okay, and we are going to add our survey link inside of here. So for example, um, obviously in your use case, you would have to customize all of this. But in this case, we're gonna drag in this text right about there, okay? Just an example. And we're gonna say, check out our survey and get a chance to win a coupon code, okay? And we're gonna add the link right there. This is the job form link to our survey. Now I sweetened it up a bit just by saying that they're able to get a chance to win a coupon for a further discount later on, which you could actually do, okay? Let's go. And we're not gonna customize any of this because this is just for demo purposes. So let's go ahead and continue. There we go, save and activate. That way we can use it. Template saved and activate successfully. Let's go back into our previous tab where we have this. We are going to refresh the list so this shows up. Okay, now we have these two emails. This is the one that we've just created. I'm gonna select that. And I want to send a hidden copy of this email just in case you want to keep it. Choose when to send this email. In this case, no, because we're already sending a delay. We're gonna say, okay, there we go. And in this case, we have a little send the email. Okay, we're good to go. So for example, we have the trigger built. We're saying that when a contact is added, that means that when someone submits that form after seven days, it's gonna send out this email where we have that details to our survey from JotForm. And we're gonna be able to get that feedback from users, from the item that they purchased, the service, donation, or whatever given reason you want to use that survey for. And that automation is built this way. In this case, I can activate the workflow here we go, we have the little green button for active and it's good to go. In this case, when someone fills it out, 
that submission form, it's gonna trigger this all automatically every single time. So you'd have to take the time just to set this up and once it's set up, it's good to go and it's automated. You don't have to do any further tweaking. Now, in case you wanna go a little bit more in depth and more customizable, you can add a few filters in between this in case you want to avoid sending out emails in a matter of if something is missing a data from that previous form or for any given reason. So you can use these plus before actually sending out the email to add a filter. Well, that is how you automate the process of sending out a follow-up survey once a survey is filled out because you sold a product, a donation, or just a random form that you're using and you want to get that feedback. Well, we thank you all for watching. My name is George, this is JotForm, and we'll see you on our next tutorials.